My research does show that they're communicating. Yes, I, I, it's a method of communication. These plants are really not individuals in the sense that Darwin thought they were individuals competing for survival of the fittest. In fact, they're uh, interacting with each other, trying to help each other survive. Well, I'm a forester, I'm specialized into looking at below ground communities. We found that these fungi actually will connect one plant to another plant. Okay, so this tree here has got roots growing out everywhere. And if we, as we get further away from the tree, we're more likely to find its roots, the ones that are involved in this trade. This is where the fungi hunt or scavenge for nutrients. So the, the tree sends down its carbon, it goes through the root system and through into these fungi, and there's a, an interface between the root uh, cortical cells and the fungal cell that's wrapped itself around that cortical cell, and that's where this exchange goes on. So meters away, you can have a plant connected to another plant, and they're just shuffling carbon and nitrogen back and forth according to who needs it. The mother trees we think of as the big old trees. They catch your eye when you walk into a forest. This Douglas fir is about 500 years old. It's a, it's a massive tree that will have an enormous network associated with it. So you can think of this as a mother tree. You know, it's, it's in the sense that it's a dominant tree in the forest. Um, it, it, it's probably networked into all of the trees all around it, even though they're of different species. So this tree is probably linked over to trees as far as you can see. It's just that there are trees in between that are, are the bridges for the network. Forest ecosystems are really complex systems, just like the Earth is a complex system, the biosphere. And the way it works is that we have all these parts and all these parts are working together, like the fungus is working together with the tree. It's a lot like how our brains work. In neural networks, um, we have our brains are comprised of neurons and axons, and uh, these neurons are physically related, but they're also you know, almost metaphysically related because they're sending messages back and forth and they're building upon each other. It works a lot like a forest ecosystem. So in this forest, the fungus and the tree working together allows lots of structure. That structure is expressed in species diversity or structural diversity of the forest. And that diversity is really what gives the forest resilience. The resilience to withstand unexpected events like a fire that might come through or an insect or a windstorm. Well, somebody's going to be left standing because it's, there's a diversity there. Some of the forest practices that we have done pay no attention to the role of these mother trees or that the trees actually will move some of their legacy to the new generation. We didn't, we didn't pay attention to it. Instead, what we did is we went and cut down those trees after they died so that we could make two by fours out of them. And we didn't give them a chance to give back to the community, I don't think. So what those dying trees will do is that they will also move resources into living trees, to the young ones coming up before they go, before they completely collapse. So it's a, it's a transfer, like a passing of the wand from one generation to the next, if we allow it to happen. <laughs>